Hello, I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. Today I'll be speaking with two experts from the Eurasia Foundation in Ukraine about implementing transparency in government. In the studio today is Carlos Guerrero. He is the chief of party in Katerina Onilogu. She is the open data lead and a former expert at the Open Data Institute in London. So, Mr. Guerrero, th thank you for joining us today. What is the purpose of the project? I mean, what is the, the wider scale of it, if you could explain it for us? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation to participate in this program. And I apologize for not speaking Ukrainian because I'm in Ukraine. But uh, I thank you uh, for, for this opportunity. Our project called uh, TAPAS Project, which is Transparency and Accountability in Public Administration and Services, is a project sponsored by uh, USAID and the British government to support the government of Ukraine to improve its uh, three components. One is the e-procurement, the other one is the open data initiative, and also the e-services. So within, within these three components, we plan to you know, implement the project. It's a project for during five years. And also we have made an, an agreement with, uh, with the civil society organizations. We confirm at the consortium Confirmed by Transparency International, the Open Data Institute in London, the Kiev School of Economics, uh, we have Texty, and also have uh, Social Boost. So these are our partners from civil society that will help us to implement this project. Why is the program, how is it crucial for the success of fighting corruption in Ukraine? Well, first of all, opening data to, go, to, to citizens is really making transparency, transparent the, the government uh, you know, work. The data is, belongs to the people, so the people should have access to this information for any purpose they want. Making electronic procurement allows the first to the more efficient procurement uh, you know, system and also uh, less time consuming. And the most important is reducing the opportunity of corruption. You may say, how do you reduce? It's because the contact between the user or the, in, the individual or the citizen with the public administration reduces significantly because it's all done electronically. So you don't have the access to pay a bribe because probably you can't bribe a computer. But, uh, but it's also important that the efficiency of government in you know, moving this, this machinery of procurement. You reduce the uh, bureaucracy, you simplify government procedures, and you make the life of all citizens much easier. The e-procurement, we hear a lot about that. I mean, how does it work? Do I go on the internet if I want to purchase something or I want to solicit a bid? And then is there a database, a website for that? All, all bids are, are published in the, uh, in the internet. So you as a supplier will be able to go into the internet and apply and apply to the bid and compete with other you know, suppliers and you know, the best bid wins. So don't really have a contact with any public official. You just do it directly, like any other countries do. You know, the most advanced countries are doing all electron electronically. And before the e-procurement system was put in place, how was it? How, how were bids um, solicited? Well, like verbally, by paperwork. You know, you go up, receive the, 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 the bids uh, requirements in a paper. You, then you submit to the government the paper and you wait for the results. Now, it's the same process, just electronically. What have been some of the biggest barriers through this, you know, the organization, what you've been doing here with USAID, what have been some of the biggest barriers you've encountered? Well, uh, we had several barriers, okay? I think the most important barrier is the cultural barrier. These are new things. E-governance is a new thing for everyone. So making things automatic instead of people going in person to seek for government services and they go directly to their computer at home and seek for a service is a change. So people have to get used to it, have to trust that this is working, that you know there's no anything that's behind because it's always like uh, the the subject of trust. And if people don't trust in the institutions, you know, even if you put it electronically, it's not going to work. So you have to create this trust and you have to create this culture of using electronic uh, systems and means to deal with government, not only in e-procurement, but you're talking about also for e-services. So instead of you know, processing your passport 
the way you are doing now, you can do it directly with the computer from home. And maybe the only physical thing you will do probably is go and pick it up at the office. Even you can be received by email, I don't know, or by mail. But it's, it's reducing the opportunity of public officials, citizen contact. What is open data? We hear a lot of that term thrown around, but what exactly is it? Uh, open data is data that uh, you can assess, use and share anytime. So we are talking about a format that's machine readable and has common standard. So in general, uh, it's in the easiest way to explain what open data is, is everyone understand public information online, right? You have it on the website, you can go to municipality, you can have a look. But what we're talking about open data, it's when it's actually easy processable, not by people, but by machines. So IT specialists can use programs and actually analyze it quite easily, much faster than, for example, you can do it with uh, uh, other types of documents. So it's almost like one giant Google spreadsheet, a Google Doc. Can be. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say not Google Doc. Uh, I would say usually it, the formats uh, it can be Excel because the computer can understand mm -hmm. Excel quite easily. Word probably not because Word is not particularly uh, very nice for for the computers. Yeah, but it is very giant and lots of spreadsheets. Yes. What, why is it important, especially with what you're doing, having open data, having shared data? Why is that so important? Uh, first of all, I would say the key benefits are the first one is uh, transparency accountability. If your government can publish how it spends money uh, in a timely manner, that's already for civil society and citizens at, uh, a way of seeing how government spends money. So this is one of the ways <coughs> it brings a transparency. And for example, another way, if your government uh, creates a new policy, how do you track down what actually the government did? So again, if you get you have all the reports and so on are accessible and shareable, then that's already accountability. Second one, I would say that open data goes beyond just transparency because this, this is a raw material for IT community, for uh, IT community particularly, create new services, create um, uh, new tools, uh, and I would say it's economic growth in a way, right? And the second, uh, last one is efficiency. So, for example, if you if you, you have this data online, then you can actually analyze where the best money you should not actually spend. Why is open data so important for what you're doing here in Ukraine? Uh, I, would like to, uh, I would like to note three key benefits. So first one is transparency accountability. Transparency is because if you have data available online uh, anytime uh, on any computer, that means that any citizen civil society can understand how government policies are implemented and how, for example, government spends the money it's ought to spend. Uh, second way, I would say it's efficiency, right? So if usually we know that the government uh, publishes freedom of information requests, if you actually do it proactively rather than uh, so if you if you do it, uh, if, for example, instead of uh, waiting for a request, you actually publish it proactively, that means you spend less money in government of processing those requests. That's one. So, for example, in, in, in the research uh, indicates that in the European Union, the cost cutting effect of open data can be up to 9 billion uh, euros by 2020. So this is not, this is a benefit that can be in Ukraine as well. And the last one is that open data creates innova innovation and economic growth because uh, startups and IT community in Ukraine can use it to create new services. Okay, where does, where does Ukraine rank in the, you know, compared to other former Soviet states in, in, in overall transparency, not just open data, but everything you're doing, where does it rank? You know, how does it compare to other countries? Well, in the last, uh Last uh, report from the Transparency International, Ukraine ranks in 131 position out of 176. Okay, so uh, it's I have the chart here. It's compared to several countries like uh, you have Nepal, Russia, Guatemala, Iran. Those are the, the ones that are among the, the same group, 131. But of course, uh, it's not a matter of being at the top of the banner. It's a matter of provi providing you know, good services, being transparent for your, your citizens. And at the end of the day, this is a matter of also political will. Okay, so you need to create this culture of open data 
through political will to open the data. Don't be afraid of open the data. Government should not be afraid of open data because this data is used for everyone. But it's a culture like, you know, they think that the information is a power. So you have the information in your institution, you think you're going to lose power by giving it up. It doesn't work like that. It's because actually it's going to increase your power because you will be able to share other, other databases from other institutions and everybody's going to share everything. So that, Okay, yeah, going off that, is there, are you encountering an obstacle uh, mentality-wise? You know, obviously doing a lot of electronics, open data, as you said, a lot of people don't want to give up the information. So are you encountering um, an obstacle with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, culturally, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, as I say, you know, it's a matter of resistance to the change. But also uh, the interoperability of these databases is also a problem because every database has been created in different times, in different systems, different languages. So you can like everybody's talking in different languages when you want to interact with these databases. So we're working actually on inter in the interoperability of these databases to make them all be able to exchange information between each other. Uh, uh, in general, people think that open data is uh, spreadsheets, but actually uh, open data is beyond technology. It is culture of government. So, for example, what we see is a lack of capacity of government officials understanding what it is, right? So it's not even resistance because I don't want to. It's sometimes resistance because I don't understand why. So you need to, to actually raise the capacity of the government and talk not just about uh, people who release data, but on a high level uh, officials. So that's why it's mostly it's culture change. It's a change of mentality of government that we are open by default. You were quoted as saying, Mr. Guerrero, that, you know, through this program, living standards of the ordinary Ukrainian will improve. How will it improve through this program? Okay. First of all, this is a program for anti-corruption and promoting transparency. By implementing these mechanisms of transparency and anti-corruption, definitely the people's uh, life will change. How? For example, in these services, people, instead of doing those big lines, and having to pay bribes to public officials for getting papers run through the system, they will do all by electronically, and probably the cost will be reduced to the minimum. So that's a way you, know, you can have a better life as a citizen. Second, uh, the use of the resources of government will be more useful, and will be more known by people what the government is doing with the resources. It's your paying taxes, it's your money, you should be government should be accountable to this to you. So people should be able to, you know, demand from government the accountability of what is, how are they spending the money. And that's how open data helps into that because it's an open book and everybody can have access without asking why. You have the right to ask for information without giving an excuse or an explanation why you need this information. You just want to see it. And that's what makes a government transparent. I know with the e-services, you're doing a lot of work with local governments. How's that been going with municipalities? Well, it's, uh, it's still a challenge uh, with municipalities because municipalities are uh, difficult. But uh, there are, you know, as I said, some municipalities that are willing to open data, that are willing to implement, you know, electronic services. Uh, it's also a matter of resources. That's another, another restraint that, you know, they may have because it is, you know, you need to implement new technology. You need to implement maybe buying new equipment. So that's a restraint. But if you can manage the budget of your municipality in a way that you will be able to provide this to citizens, I think it's feasible. But, you know, political will is important. Corruption is a matter of opportunity, and it's also a matter of will. So if you have the will and you have the opportunity to do it, you will do it the other, either way, the good or the bad. Yeah, I would say that uh, on the city level, it's even more important than national level because as a citizen, you want to find out what's happening next to you, right? You want to know when the next bus is coming, you know, want to know how much money spends your local hospital, you want to know all the things that matter to your everyday life. That's why working with the municipality is the key here. And municipalities, they understand uh, their, uh, their role in the life of everyday life of citizens. So in our experience, it's been quite open so far.
Uh, and we have, for example, uh, in Ukraine, uh, some cities who are already champions in open data, for example, Lviv in Western Ukraine, it's, or, it's, uh, it's already has a, its own portal of open data where it provides information on actually about the kindergartens, about the hospitals, about, uh, uh, about their budget in a local uh, of their municipalities. So it, it has already shown the impact. Okay, how do you programs such as yours, specifically yours, decide who to work with in Ukraine? Well, we work with the government of Ukraine. And we are based on their priorities. And we work with the state agency for e-governments and the Ministry of uh, Economic Trade and Development. Those are our two counterparts of institutions. And with them, uh, you know, they, do, they put the priorities on what institutions we're going to work with. And my final question, how will you know if you've been successful what what you know when will you know that this program was a success what are you what are you looking for well first we'll see if the e-procurement is uh, is already like a standard for e-procurement uh, so everybody is using e-procurement in government for all the procurement the electronic system that's one one measure the other one is how many e-services have been automated what was manual before now okay and the other one is how many municipalities will have their open data, you know, books open, I mean, everything. So that's one way to measure. I would say that when it becomes business by usual, right? So when ministers do it, uh, open uh, the data uh, automatically with any support because they want to and they understand why it's important. And actually, uh, I think the key success here is not just opening the data and having the information so that it's for civil society and citizens to understand what it means and having the right tools to understand the data. So I would say when we have enough tools, services that Ukrainian citizens can use, then that's when open data becomes successful. Well, great. Oh, do you have one more comment? Well, on the same line, I would say that it's important to understand that also the citizen participation is crucial. If citizens don't participate, don't get engaged and don't demand all these things, it's not going to work. So we need also to train citizens in their rights and the ability and the capacity of government to produce this information. So it's a, you know, a comprehensive uh, solution, but everybody has to put their share. Well, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. I really appreciate it. I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. I was speaking with Carlos Guerrero and Katarina Onilogwu from the USAID program and the UK government. Thank you.